interesting stuff out this week starting with Splice which is the new film by Vincenzo Natale who directed Cube uh, which we've seen a lot of sort of rip-offs of ever since he made that for almost no money at all um, Adrian Brody and Sarah Polly are um, scientists uh, called Clive and Elsa and as soon as you have scientists called Clive and Elsa well, as soon as you have somebody called Elsa what do you think? What well, you think Elsa, to think? well, you think Elsa Lanchester, you th- and then Colin Clive. I mean, basically, why would I think Elsa Lanchester? Because it's it, you know scientists. It's a, because the whole film has a sort of Frankenstein thing going on, and when the two central characters are called Clive and Elsa, you go, okay, fine, I know it. Do I? Right. Well, one does. They are. You might. Yes, one. If that's does. what you think, let, you know, obviously get in touch because I think everyone else will go, okay, what? It's like if you had a film in which two characters were called Bert and Ernie, right? You'd go. They're called Bert and Ernie. No, you'd go Muppets, wouldn't you? Yeah, I suppose so, if I thought about it for a while. Fine. OK, so they are scientists working in a laboratory that is generating new life. What are they called again? They're called Clive and Elsa. Right. Ah. OK, fine. So, and um, they have come up with a new... Is that Elsa Lanchester? Yes. Oh. Elsa Lanchester, she of... Commentary Polytechnic? <laughs> Used to be called Lanchester Poly. Did it? Okay, yeah, fine. Was, Bride of Frank, it's not the rest of you, but for yeah. you, that's fine. Okay, so anyway, moving swiftly on. Where were we? What's this film? They are, this is Spliced oh, yes. by Vincenzo Natale. So they are working in a laboratory which is doing a whole bunch of genetic research. They have come up with a strange leathery creation which they seem to have created, you know, entirely. It looks like a, a strange globulating leathery mess. When we are is told, it David Copperfield, the magician? <laughs> very good. We are told that within this new creation is a, a whole bunch of sort of genetics of which will do things like cure diseases and so aging and do infinitely interesting things but our heroes want to take things on to the next stage which is by mixing what they've got with human dna obviously they're not allowed to do that because they have very strict rules about you know how you can and can't but they get carried away or she gets carried away, which says come on let's do it anyway let's take a bit of human dna let's put it together let's see what happens so they get a bit of human dna they splice there's the title uh, splice it together with the leathery strange bug-like creature that they have already and bow and behold they turn up with a new creature that starts off as a strange scribbling scuttling little gribbly thing but as it grows starts to look more and more like a human but with strangely insect-like or bird-like or reptilian or strangely mutant buggy qualities he's worried she treats it as her daughter now i'm going to play you a clip as her daughter there were yeah because it's a it's a she there are only two although there's a there's there's a strange hermaphrodite thing going on um (laughs) there there was only two clips of this movie one of them was extremely unlistenable this is the most listenable audio clip. The more listenable. Bear, m- of the two. The more of the two. Yes, that's right. Thank you. Here we go. I want to know why are we taking all these risks all of a sudden? What is going on? What, what is, when what did you get so scared of everything? When did you stop being a scientist? <laughs> no. <laughs> stop. You go to your place. Go to your place. She's not going to hurt you. Okay, so we have to deal with this. In years gone by, all of those noises would have been Percy Edwards. That's right. Every single one of them. Percy Edwards did famously do the noise for some uh, alien movie. Did he do Alien? I think he might have done Alien. Anyway, someone will tell us. Yeah, he he did something that you don't expect it to have been him, but it genuinely was. Anyway, so... The interesting thing when we were playing that clip was you laughed. Yeah, and in the screen, funny. fine. In the screening that I was in, there was also some you know, a fair amount of laughter. And I spent some time wondering about whether the laughter made me cross or whether actually the laughter was acceptable because the movie, in it, in a very interesting way, m- m- both manages to flirt with macabre satirical comedy as well as being sort of deadpan serious at the same time. It's a very Canadian film in as much as it's. You know, very David Cronenberg, very Atomy Goyne. Of course, Sarah Polly has worked with both of those people anyway. And it has that strange, cold, chilling, satirical, slightly removed quality that actually you do tend to get in movies that come out of Canada rather than movies that come out of America. Its closest cousin would be, if you've seen the David Cronenberg film The Fly, I mean, people have referred this to The Fly because obviously The Fly is the film in which Jeff Goldblum mutates into flight. Interestingly enough, the original ending of The Fly was meant to be that the uh, Gina Davis actually produces this butterfly child who is the, the sort of the strange mixing of her and Jeff Goldblum and all, their, all the DNA comes together to produce this thing 
thing, which is not a bug, and but is actually a sort of beautiful butterfly. Funnily enough, that idea seems to echo all the way through Splice, that what they've created in Dren, she's named Dren, which is nerd spelt backwards. Get it? Well, now that you've pointed, pointed that out. Pointed out, fine. So they've created this show, but there's a whole tension going on between them, which is that he wants to have kids, she doesn't want to have kids, but she has this strange maternal relationship with Dren. He, on the other hand, having wanted to have kids and having refused to see Dren as anything other than a creation, then becomes involved with it in a way which is much more sinister, much more complicated, and much more, I have to say, awkward in order to handle. So the film on one level is metaphorically a really twisted family drama with t dealing with really dark strange subjects on the other hand is a strange gribbly monster movie with a great sense of fun i mean there is one scene in it in which they have this great big exhibition in which they demonstrate the the sort of the uh, the wormy like uh, reptile creatures that they've got and they want to show everybody how fabulous they are and it turns into something you know resembling a splatter fest but very much in that cronenberg way the splatter is always done in a surreal plastic reality way i mean there are plenty of moments in the movie that you go, Ew, but not in a not in a sort of not in a camp way like that. Not in a camp way like that, but in a kind of in a sort of surreal, slightly Salvador Dali, you know, eyebrow raised, monocle, uh, you know. I'd like to do one of floppy those. Floppy. How would that? Wristwatch how can I go way. ooh in a Salvador Dali I, wristwatch? Clearly, kind of I can't even begin to do it because I can only do ah. camp. Um, the, I mean, the Cronenberg references go even further. I think there are points in Dren's evolution when she looks, to some extent, like the Mugwumps from uh, Cronenberg's adaptation of The Naked Lunch, and there is certainly a you know, a, a great design similarity there. It's one of those films in which some of the ideas work. I mean, all the ideas are interesting. Some of them work, some of them hang together, some of them are chilling, some of them are sort of the, the more action-y sequences towards the end. You think they work as straightforward action-adventure fantasy. Occasionally, increasingly, as, as the drama moves on, it slightly loses its footing. I mean, in the same ways, as the creature grows and as the ambiguities about whether she's human, whether she's not human, whether the responses to her can be as one you know would have with a fellow species, as these things move on the drum becomes slightly more uncertain and I also felt that in the, the key moment at which the relationship basically fractures they weren't quite sure which film they were making there are certain times in it in which you feel as if within the production there's a tension between making a really twisted really strange really Cronenbergian oddball weird movie on the one hand or on the other hand making a movie that you think is going to have a massive you know mainstream appeal is going to appeal to a blockbuster audience is going to get people in who want to see an exciting fancy adventure with monsters and people running around and and I think it never quite resolves those things. I think that's one of the reasons why in the screening that I saw, there was laughter and not all of it entirely appreciative laughter. So I think you'd have to say hand on heart, it doesn't all hang together, but there's enough in it that's interesting and adventurous. And there's enough in the performances that very cleverly walks a line between keeping a straight face, but understanding that what you're doing is, you know, is borderline satirical, which is done very well. I mean, there are certain sequences in it in which our hero and heroine are sort of crawling around on the floor, chasing around after gribbly monster parts. And you think this is entirely the sort of film which when the director says cut, you're either looking at nothing at all because it's a CGI, or you're looking at some strange rubbery creation that's run by three guys holding, you know, rods and bits of string. And they're performances are very good. It's very, very hard to act in this kind of movie. It's very hard to act in a movie when you're acting against a strange alien creature, as anyone who's ever made a monster movie will tell you, and they do a very, very good job. So it's not by any means flawless, but it's interesting and it's ambitious and it's engaging and it's, I think, romping enough to at least tickle a mainstream audience. Although I think in the end, its weirdnesses, even though it tries to take the edge off them slightly, are still weird enough to keep it essentially uh, to a cult audience. But I think it's the kind of thing that in years to come, people say, Did you see that splice, you know, it actually really was an interesting film.